Istanbul, a city with a rich past, but somehow never stuck in it. And amidst the historic sites, and they're very lovely, by the way, it always looks to the future. Right, come on you. Today, the city's playing host to a trio of tech conferences, highlighting the value and opportunities created by connected partnerships and innovation. Oh, and embodied AI, such as this, with rotating LiDAR and cameras for eyes, silicon-based microphones for ears, and gyroscopes for direction and acceleration. Officially, an intelligent quadruped robot. Yeah, I know, even the tech guy calls it a dog. Anyway, amidst the guests here today, includes Seizo Ono, a senior executive from the UN's International Telecommunication Union. So what's his biggest challenge when it comes to standardising all these next generation technologies, such as 5.5G and the Internet of Things, across different global markets and regulatory environments? Yeah, actually, as you pointed out, we have a, uh, currently the different regulatory environment, also different market. It may create some difficulty into uni unified a uh, common solution for the all over the world. That uh, may be uh, some uh, difficult uh, challenges so now facing. And also recently, some uh, convergence uh, between the some uh, the industries and the expertise happening. That also create some uh, difficulties in the, makes things complicated. But at the same time, it may be uh, some opportunity to improve, uh, to promote uh, digital transformation. Well, what's the impact, do you think, or what are you seeing as we move from 5G to 5.5G on telecommunications? And I know you're someone who is deeply involved in innovation. What are the changes you want to see? AI. AI technology uh, becomes uh, fundamental to our complex networks. So already we have many standards on AI, uh, over 100. Also, we are working on many AI issues. So uh, more toward the 5.5G, more AI technology implemented in these standards. And also, we are actual networks also implement that. That's a uh, definitely trend for the future. And what's the change you really want to see in that as a result of that AI? Uh, actually, the AI uh, has already uh, implemented in the many different areas uh, naturally. Uh, for the example, uh, network orchestration, multimedia coding, and uh, optimization of the energy consumption of the uh, networks and data center. As such, we are uh, currently, well, more appropriate uh, areas we have to uh, promote such uh, technology to implement. How can developing countries be better integrated into this standardization framework just to ensure that they benefit from all the positives that are coming down the track as well? Yeah, thank you for the good question because <laughs> my top priority is the Im impactful standards. I mean that. Uh, Standardization uh, value uh, truly becomes variable for only when it widely in, uh, adopted mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the world, including developing countries. So uh, first, standards must be used, implemented, actually used, it, uh, deployed. It's a very important uh, point uh, to increase and uh, enhance uh, uh, standardization value itself. So we have uh, many uh, programs for the bridging the standardization gap. Mm. To, uh, we are providing such program to the developing countries. We are now uh, try to help uh, such activities, or also the, or the in terms of implementation, uh, industry play a great role to implementing the standards. So we are now very active uh, to uh, increase the involvement of the industries. That's my and I have to ask you, you're, you're passionate about it. Are you very positive? Are you positive about the future for standardization and developing countries being involved? Yeah, of course. Uh, we are now trying to encourage uh, people to uh, uh, participate in the ITUT study group uh, meetings. Also, uh, another pillar is for the implementation of standards. We are providing some 
uh, help to implement the standards in the developing countries.